We have five, count them, five focus areas for a five-star client experience. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 194. You can catch all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Channel Brian, it's almost the end of the year. <laughs> How did this happen? I don't know. It's crazy. I, I just really am going with the flow. I I want, I, I don't believe it. I really want to find a few days in these last couple weeks to have a little, I'm taking a little break right in early Christmas to spend with my family in Georgia. Nice. So we're doing it a week early, but I hope to have some time over the real holiday break to have a little downtime, a little downtime so that I can really get myself ready for the new year. Right. Like yeah, really you need some, in. some introspection and some real rest. I think everyone mm -hmm. needs a little real rest, even though, you know, you be that life. I think life has slowed. I think life has slowed down over the last couple of years since COVID. I think I, I still feel that, you know, I mean, it's still really hectic, but at the same time, it's not to the same level. I don't believe, or at least my life isn't before everything. Mm -hmm. did. So Good it's point. But I still, I, there's been adjustments. We're, we're going to talk about that probably a little bit next next yeah. week is our year end um, episode where we sort of cover year in review and what stood out, what were the points, and it's a nice conversation that we'll have. But I'm, I hear you, and I feel like uh, I do want to uh, upcoming episode. I feel like it's good to revisit, and maybe in January we can talk a little bit about this whole idea. Remember our you know, re restore, rejuvenate, you know, refocus. That's right. really, that's what I'm going to be doing. And maybe we can share some ideas around that. If you at least do it by the end of the year, if not into the first week or so, but so you can really make sure you've done everything you need to do for the new year. And that's kind of where this episode is going. Cause I'm in the middle of putting my systems in place for this new area that I'm, I'm really all in on in Florida. I've learned so much in just a one quarter of, of diving in, to a new marketplace, understanding different terminology, a different type of, you know, real estate's real estate, but it's different things that you have to learn if you move from one place to another, just common things uh, down to technical stuff. And it's been an education, but I'm also more clear than I've ever been on the things I've been coaching. And it's, I get that it's difficult to walk the talk, meaning everyone knows what they need to do the systems that they need to put in place, the, the checklist, the whole nine yards, but getting it done can be daunting and overwhelming because your day is filled up with, if you're busy in real estate, like I am right now, closing like five, six escrows this month. I think it'll be a total of five in the month. Um, is There's no time, <laughs> you know, every little, so I get it. However, that's what I want to talk about today, Matt. I want to talk about five focus areas I've been working on, the things I'm doing, uh, the progress I've made, I'm not 100% there yet. However, I know when I follow my own advice, I'm going to give everybody today, it will lead to a five star client experience. And I just got three five star client reviews. Actually. There you go. All right. Well, let's just there jump it in. is. Let's let's jump in, Jenna Brian. Yeah. So what? Let's talk first about what are the five focus areas, and then we've got great show notes for you. Today, you can go on over to WBNL Coaching or WBNL Podcast. That'll get you there. You can click through to our podcast and go to episode 194 and you can get all these notes. Uh, and, and we're referring to things that we've talked about before. Majority of what I'm going to cover today, we have in our training programs. We'll, we'll talk to you about how you can get some of our free stuff and maybe even give everybody an offer so that they can get back to the basics with our real estate sales builder program where I really dive into all these areas. So these are the five focus areas. Number one, first impressions. And how you, I'm going to talk about how you create first impressions with some of the things that you should already have in place. Then be that knowledge broker and local expert is the second focus area. Number three is huge, ongoing communication. I'm going to give you very specific things what I mean by that, because I think if this is the biggest area that if you can, some of the other things are just, you're going to either know the stuff or you're not, or you're going to get better at it, you know, and first impressions you'll understand in a moment. But if you're not good at communicating, being the first to communicate, that can just kill your whole five-star experience, okay? Your follow-up systems, which is 
before, during, and after. I'm going to speak. That's the lion's share of the work I have to finish up. And then your post-closing, which means putting them into your client appreciation program, which leads to referrals. Okay, so those are the five areas. Let's let's dive into first impressions. Now, the areas that I want to talk about, and if you need help on the first thing, which is an amazing online presence, it has to be awesome. People Google you. They need to be able to find your Google My Business, your Zillow, your name when they put in your name your area or your name in real estate or realtor, you need to own the first page of Google. And you do that by having a Google My Business, Zillow, Realtor.com, social sites. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you can do. And if you don't know how to do that, and if you don't have that, you got to stop the presses, write that down as a priority to do by the end of the year. Just did a YouTube video on this, right, Matt? We just That's did, right. a, I just did one. You can go over to our WBNL coaching YouTube channel, go into the details of, of that. And guess what? You can actually get one of our modules that's of the Real Estate Sales Builder Program. I think it's module nine. That's right. It's completely free where you can get exactly how to do all of that, how to create your Google My Business, how to step by step of everything I'm talking about. This is first impressions. People are going to sum you up and make some, you can start to actually build a little trust and rapport, which is my second point with the power of video. We've been talking a lot about that, right? I'm super excited, Matt. Matt's going to be helping me in my Florida endeavors here with doing just that. How do you create some first great first impressions? People get to know, like, and trust you because they see you through your channel. And for my channel, it'll be YouTube. They see your consistency of what you're posting. They see your reviews. That is all part of this, right? And that's the third point, client reviews. It's it's so critical. There's so many of you that have been in the business and you do an amazing job. You do provide five-star customer experience, but nobody would know that because you're not doing what you need to do to let the rest of the world know that, okay? Even if somebody refers you, even if you have a past client refer you to a friend, those folks are going to go Google you. So right. The first impressions come from maybe somebody says, wow, you got to use Jan. She's just great. That gets you an appointment, but people are doing their homework. And then the last part of first impressions, Matt, to me is how good are you at making that initial connection, responding to an inquiry if somebody fills something out or it's a lead or it's a referral? How good are you at quickly getting back and establishing that rapport and that, and you can create that first impression slash start with the rapport and, and demonstrate who you are in that first connection. You know, what's funny about that initial connection, especially if it's something that's online and if someone's filling out a form or doing something like that is I think that we all have a pretty low threshold for what we expect that to be. And when someone exceeds that, it is obvious. That oh my gosh, this is brilliant what you're saying. That is so true because it's in a way what you're saying. Another way to say that is it's not difficult to stand yeah. out in a sea of mediocrity no, when it comes to customer not. service anymore. <laughs> That's exactly right. right? Everyone's most, I think our expectation is mediocrity for this particular mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah. So you can really make a difference here. All right. So the next part of first impressions I included in this area, and it ties into the next area, which is being that knowledge broker and local expert. But let's talk about it because I feel it's critical that you have to conduct a thorough buyer or seller consultation in person or via Zoom if it's an out-of-state buyer or client. So you can make, you can continue to build that rapport, establish the common grounds. I'm telling you, I'm having so much fun with this, Matt. I mean, I am meeting a variety of people and I am just continuing to dust off all the skills that I've had that I didn't really quite realize how much, how practiced I am in just running brokerages and so forth at reading people, being able right. to connect with them, sure. finding something in common with them. I mean, my gosh, the other day it was numerology. Okay. It's just random stuff. Uh, you know, what, there, you always can find something in common with someone and whoever you are. And, and it, you finally, f you find this out by just asking questions and being and listening and caring and, and coming from a place. And it just one next thing, you know, people are telling you things and, they're, they're diving deeper into their why of why they want to buy or sell. And that all will come out in a great buyer or seller consultation. So it's the opportunity to continue the conversation, to set expectations for how you communicate, which is where you're going to. We'll talk more about communication momentarily. But this is where you find out how do they like to be communicated with? Do they want you to text them? Do they want you to pick up the phone and call them? Ask people. Don't assume. 
you'll be surprised. Do you want me to follow up, you know, a text with an email? What's your preferred method of communication and honor that and keep it in your notes and know that. Um, in your consultation, this is your opportunity to educate people on the buying and selling process, what they need to know. This is the big area. Matt knows that for me, you know, after 30 years in Nevada, I know this like the back of my hand, you know, I, I can sit down and talk to people about what's happening in the market. And, you know, some of the stuff's common, but what I've learned in Florida is how important it is when I'm working with a buyer to explain about ages of homes and how important it is to get what's called a four point and a wind mitigation. We have to deal with insurance issues out here. And I've now learned about all of this, that now I must set those expectations in the beginning. So you're not surprising somebody at the, in the middle of a transaction. Oh yeah, you're, you might have to have flood insurance. What is flood insurance? What does that mean? How could you maybe not even be able to buy this house because it won't get insurance? What are the reasons for that? How we have to be able to negotiate that? You know, what do they want to look for? What they need to know up front Now, when you're doing this in a consultation, people only kind of retain 10% of what you're talking mm. about. So yep. I'm going to talk about how you, you, you set the tone here in this first impression consultation, but it's the other things I'm going to talk about today that reinforce that you do know what you're talking about and you're reminding them of the things that you talk about initially with a buyer or a seller. Okay. So uh, another, uh, other things that you're going to handle in this initial interview with a buyer is we're in a seller's market still. What does that mean to them as a buyer? How are they needing to be competitive with writing offers? Uh, helping people understand that, how many homes that you might have to look at and what's happening, you know, being able to talk about the market and knowing yeah. the stats and so forth, right? Yeah, how many offers you're going to have to write. Possibly, right? And then yeah. but maybe not if you're competitive and it depends. It's it, Things are shifting. Things are always shifting, but there's, we're still in a seller's market. And for sellers, just because we're in a seller's market doesn't mean they can price it crazily. So you, and to me, it's always the three P's. And recently in my presentations with sellers, I always bring up the three P's. Preparation. What does that mean? That's where they have a couple recent opportunities for sellers that I've had. It's all about, okay, we've got to declutter. You got to start packing some of these things up. This is what we have to do to stage the home so the photos are going to look great. Yeah. Let me show you what I mean. Would you buy this house or that house? You know, would you go look at that house or this house just by look, showing people pictures of, uh, of a mess versus a, a staged, well-lit property? You know, so, hey, seller, you're going to be, you're responsible for this, but I'm going to show you what you need to do. I'm going to give you a checklist. I'm going to help you. Pricing, you have to talk to them about pricing and how you don't want to leave money on the table, but if you're overpriced, it's not going to sell and use data to back that up. But if you can find the sweet spot, then you're going to get them the most and maybe even create a bit of a little bit of a bidding war. And then promotion is what you're going to do, right? So they're involved in the preparation and the pricing. You prep them with both of those, but then you're all about what are you going to do to promote? This is all stuff that's going to set these first impressions that you're a professional, you know what you're talking about, which then leads to the focus area number two, which is be the knowledge broker and the local expert, right? And we have a couple other things on this um, Oh, you okay. It, it, you, might have, you might have hit on some of these things. I didn't really, but it, it, it um, I got ahead of myself. But in that consultation, you're going to talk more about the importance of getting a home inspection, a home warranty, market conditions. And then I really recommend that what you're, and I, I referred, I referenced it, but I'll, I'll say it again. It's not enough to tell people have a buyer or a seller's guy that has the process and stuff in it. And that way, again, you look professional and you can reference in week two. Okay, go back to your guide. Remember, this is what this is where we are in the process now. And I think that's how you can clearly it's first impressions that it's going to be like, wow, this person's super professional. Well, it, then, talks, it talks to your point of they're only going to well, why I, I don't know why I moved ahead is because I frankly think this is is in the next category, which is the be the knowledge broker and the local expert. So it's it, it's it's a little bit of a the, it goes into both the areas. So what do we mean by this? Well, I talk about this all the time. Right. And this is what has helped me stand apart right now, in my opinion, Um my experience in the real estate business, but my willingness to learn and be a student of this new area that I'm working in by going and studying the MLS every day, going out and being involved in showing property and having transactions and studying it and asking questions, and getting my broker to help me. These are all things that have helped me quickly get up to speed so that I feel confident in talking to a buyer or a seller about what is going on. I don't have to stop and think about it. I can simply just talk about 
what's happening in the market, what are the stats, what are the average sales prices. The other point that I, I have had some feedback on, Matt, is being able, people want to talk to somebody who's a local expert. That's you right. know, I'm dealing with some folks that are, most of my people are out of, buyers are out of state. They have a lot of questions. What are the, what tell me about Clearwater and Dunedin and these other parts of Tampa Gulf Coast and what are the differences and what are some good places to go? You know, what do you do here? What are the great places to eat when you're able to, you know, what's the best example of this is whenever I'm working with my broker, shout out to Patricia Harris over at Celtic Realty. She is so, so knowledgeable. I love just spending time with her because she'll be like, just what she would do with a buyer or seller. She does it with me. I just tell her, just load me up with information. I want to know well, over here is this. And did you know that that's, that has been around since such and such. And just because of her experience, but she's a student of it all too. And she's been here. She just naturally is able to pass on information, which then continues to solidify that, you know, what you're talking about. You're the local market expert. So it's not just about real estate. It's about living and playing and, working in the area that you choose to live to, right? It's funny because I think in a lot of ways, going into a new market area like you have has actually given you a better opportunity to go in because you had to learn all of that, right? I think Absolutely. a lot of people become very complacent when they are someplace for a long time. Um, kind of just knowing the things they like to do, but don't really have a good idea of really what else is going on in the area. And I think that, um, you know, this is critical, right? For all the things you're talking about. People that oh are moving gosh. out of the area want to know what the area is all about. You know, the feedback that I get from clients is like, wow, thank you so much for mm -hmm. providing me this, you know, additional information and insights. I feel like I'm getting to know the area. And that's what people, and it was just natural for me in Nevada because of living there so long. Right. But the point I'm making to, to what you just said is that you can learn it. You can, you want to know it. You're, it's why I wanted to move here. It's that's it's right. my homework. And, and now I'm just being more intentional in, in being that person who's like a local guide. You're the local guide providing your opinions and your your feedback. And it's OK in my it, you know, it's, it's, I think it's OK to do that. Right. Sure. Oh, my God. Yeah. Also under the knowledge broker, local expert. So you've got the market, what's happening in the real estate market, what's it, what's all about your local area. But it's also being the knowledgeable about the real estate process in your area and understanding all of the forms. It goes without saying, can you really do you write a clean offer? Or is it messy? You know, do you do you have people countering you because you're not doing a great job with all of that? This is all part of expertise as well. Do you pay attention to detail? Can you sit and explain to someone uh, that's in your area and maybe has or a first time home buyer and explain the disclosures to them? Can you paraphrase or summarize that and help them understand what they're signing? There's that level. And then are you educating them and informing them about the process the whole way through? Again, I go back to those first impressions and do you have a checklist of sorts for them or a buyer guide or a seller guide helping them understand this is what we're doing next. People really appreciate that. Even yeah. if they've sold before, they want to know what's next. What should we expect next? Okay. And also in this knowledge area is your negotiation skills. This is where you really, in my opinion, earn your real estate commission. You get into escrow, you know, sitting down so far, all of this is fun. You, you learn, you're meeting with people, you're building rapport, yeah. you're doing the consultation, showing homes is fun. It can be fun. And writing the offer is not hard. You know where the, the, the where it becomes tricky is once you're in the escrow process and all the little things that can go wrong, stuff wrong with the inspection, people changing their mind, ha get, negotiating and, you know, coming to terms so that we can get the deal closed. That's Slab where leaks. you work. Hmm? Slab leaks. You know. Yeah. Having things happen in your, your middle of your escrows, like a person dying and uh, a leak happening. And yeah. but you, there's always solutions. So you have to be a problem resolver. You have to be good at finding the win-win. This is where a lot of people lose it. Uh, I think it's about collaborative deal making. I think the other part that helps in negotiations is building great rapport with the other agents. I always try to make a friend and, 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 and a you know, really connect with the agent on the other side. You never even meet the other agent. Everything's via text for the most part or email. Mm -hmm. I make it a point to pick up the phone and talk to the agents I'm working with and, right. and continue to build that, right? Which then goes Speaking into the area, area, good segue, area three, which is ongoing communication. And I, and this is where the biggest thing is, I think I'm really working on this, especially if you have clients who are more task-driven, 
uh, you know, that they're going to love the checklist idea, but they are waiting to be communicated with. You can create a five-star experience big time. If you're always anticipating and you're the one who reaches out to a client first before they have to call and text you about what's the status of something. So what's a couple ways that you can do this? One, provide that checklist or guide to help them navigate the process. But then you're going to have regular, there's two ways to do it. When you get information, so like I'm in the middle of escrows right now, and we just got we just got something back, like a title commitment or the results of inspections, you immediately, and your client might be also in on those emails. So you want to immediately, not the next day, not hours from now, because your client just got something and they're wondering what's next if they're a first time home buyer. So it's, it's letting them know that here's what's going to happen, the little milestones along the way. And then I'm going to be communicating with you. If you ever have questions, you call me, but where you're going to separate yourself is if you anticipate the questions and you call and say, all right, what's next? I just did it today. Great. We just got that. So what we're waiting on now is the appraisal and when we need B and we need C and we're in good shape and that's it just in a text. So an immediate call, text or email when you have something to convey to your clients, not waiting for them to go, what did that email mean about this title commitment? What's that all about? That's how you, you separate yourself. And then I really love it. I'm going to give you an example of, I, I've never had anybody do this. I love it. One of the lenders, the lender I work with primarily right now is Ron, Ron Morris. He calls every Tuesday morning, somewhere between 10, 1030, every Tuesday morning since I've started working with him. And he just goes, Ron, he goes, Jan, it's Ron. Uh, for you. And if I didn't answer, he'll leave me an update. This is your Tuesday update call. Everything's looking good on our files. I love that. Yeah. He never misses a beat on that. That right there, I've been coaching this for years. Like Mondays, I like Tuesdays too. I think it's powerful. But Mondays after a weekend for listings is to call at a certain time every Monday. You let your sellers know, I'm giving you an update. We had this many showings. Here's this or that, or here we are in the escrow. I love that. I am telling you, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, wow, this guy, it's impressive. It's super impressive. Weekly status updates, never misses it. Even if he's, even if he's away, he'll, he'll call and make that phone call. It's amazing to me. Right. So that's five-star experience right there. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. Five-star experience. And make sure that when you uh, are doing that on a consistent basis, you don't do it the first time there's something wrong that you don't want to tell your client, because that is the, that's a pitfall that people fall into. Yeah. So easy to do, just be on top of it, which brings us to the fourth focus area, which is your follow-up system. So before, during, and after checklist for a buyer and seller transaction, that's for you, like you staying on top of it. It can parlay into a guide that you give them as well to help them navigate the process. But are you staying on top of where you are with everything? And then I really have started doing this. I'm excited about this part. I am leveraging my uh, market CMA. Uh, uh, I'm actually started with, I'm using Google. So I'm using my Gmail templates. I've already created like four templates. Uh, um, and let me kind of go into what I think are those areas. So I think there's a good four to five repetitive templates that you can create that are standard things that you could customize per each transaction if you need to, that really can help set yourself apart. So let me walk through those. Okay. The very first one would be congratulations. We're under contract. Now this could go to the seller and the buyer. I just did, I have to actually get this out to a seller today where you provide the pertinent information to your client, which would be timelines. So for example, here's the escrow information. Here's our closing agent reminder again. And here are the key, you know, there's always three or four or five timelines that we have to hit in a transaction like due diligence inspections. Um, when does the loan approval have to be done? Getting the HOA approval, uh, resale packet, title commitment, whatever's in your contract, those become, I do this every single time now. It's a, I look at the contract and I hit the five time blocks. Then I put this in the email, it, the template's already created. Now I just have to insert the dates. So it's congratulations. Here's our key timelines. Here's our escrow is now open and confirmed. Earnest money receipt, you know, is there or whatever. And then for, and then you tell the seller what to expect next. What's going to happen next, Mr. Seller is the buyer is going to go order their inspection. You don't have to do everything. It's just like, what's the next step for the buyer? Congratulations. Here's everything. Um, let me talk to you about earnest money deposit. I already talked to you about it, but let me remind you about wire fraud, what you need to expect. 
and then maybe recommend, here's that recommendation again of three home inspections because that's their next step. Go get a home right. inspection, right? That would be the first contact. Next, recommend the power of three, right? Three insurance agents, three home warranty companies. So I have uh, templates done up that say, here are three insurance agents and it, it can change depending on where I am because some of them work in certain areas. And I all, always say, go to your own insurance agent first, right? But make sure they're familiar with this area because yeah. I had a client recently, Matt, get a quote from who they get uh, insurance for their car and they called a local place and they quoted them $3,000 for insurance. Wow. And it's an $800 policy. So there's an example of somebody not really knowing. So you always give people three so they can choose and they can get quotes. I have one that has three or four home warranties in it and he, you still have time to get a home warranty because in some cases we're not asking for a home warranty. We're writing a clean offer, but I like to let the client know, the buyer know, home, what is a home warranty versus home insurance? I have that email put together and then moving and packing tips and useful links and resources that would have things like utilities and um, cable and internet information and uh, how to change their address, you know, just useful things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the last one can be um, getting them a couple last things there because you're going to say congratulations when we close, but it's the closing appointment, right? Um, it will be things like, okay, we have a closing appointment, Mr. Seller or Mr. Buyer. Where is it? Is it a mobile notary date, time, location? Don't forget you're going to need to bring your ID if you're doing it live in person with them, right? And then um, bank info for seller, wire transfer, you know, for the seller, get ready to, you know, bring your checkbook so you can have your funds, you know, wire transferred to you. You got to remind them of these things. For a buyer, it's, here's, here's another example of something that you have to tell. I had, I, you know, I had this problem in Nevada as well. There are some banks, so they may be coming from wherever in the United States and they're going to do a wire transfer here, but their bank won't let them do it. Uh, over a certain amount, 10,000 and less. So people need to go find that out. It, it, actually, that needs to be in your beginning guide about wire transfer, about wire fraud. You have to talk about wire fraud all the time. And then you need to say, you need to go check with your bank and make sure you're going to be able to do a wire transfer if you're here, because you might not be able to. We've had right. situations in my company where people have had to fly back to wherever they're from and do the wire transfer. God. And that, that could have been avoided by, by these little things. So this, it's this type of stuff, right? So that's all part of the education process, you know, uh, helping them understand it. And then it's congrats, successful sale, we're closed. And this is where you now jump into requesting a review, which is what I just did. And so far I have three out of four reviews done. Beautiful. We after we closed. That's okay. awesome. I didn't have to follow up five times. Love it. And uh, that brings me to the final area, which is the post-closing and client appreciation. And I'll, I'll say here, it's a, I do think it's powerful to do a closing gift and you can make it unique to the person. I've had people appreciate that. I've left it, you know, left something there if they're coming in from out of state or whatever. And it's just a nice gesture, whatever that means to you. And then you may have to remind clients. I, I do have one that I'll have to remind them to do that client review, maybe two or three more times. And then um, you, very important, post-closing emails, especially for buyers, homestead exemption. We had that in Nevada. We still have it in Nevada. You, we have it here. And this is huge. You have to let people know about this. If it's their primary residence, they can save considerable amount on their property taxes. There's other exemptions too for widows and widowers and military and so on. Um, and you just, all I've done is gather the information from the, the source and pass it on to them and say, here's the information. Here's a brochure about Homestead. Here's what you do. Here's the things that you need to know about it. Here's where you can go learn about it, but don't forget to do it Yeah, okay? because it's important. So these, all these things that you, you help them with. Right. So, um, and then first week of January. So what I've been following my own advice, I, I kept a, co a closing statement because I'm going to mail them a closing statement uh, in January to say, congratulate, you know, I'm, you know, if, if for me, I just kind of got started here in this last quarter, but if I'd sold a house in January last year, they might've lost their closing statement. And so now they need it for their taxes. So that's a follow-up, right? And then you just put people into your normal client appreciation program. For me, it's a monthly newsletter. It's finding out their birthdays and which I haven't done, which is something I need to do for these clients and sending a birthday, sending a birthday card or, you know, uh, 
text or video, a home anniversary, which is easy. That's just the, you know, the date that they bought the home from you doing an annual market analysis and any client events or parties or things that you're going to do, whatever your client appreciation, client connection program is, you put them in because that then creates that referral, repeat and referral business. People want to keep on reminding you. I was just listening to a podcast where it's national stats and they were talking about agents will in the buyer and seller survey recently for NAR will, would use their agent again, but some of them don't remember who they are a year or two later because agents oh, wow. haven't stayed in touch with them. They haven't stayed in touch with them. They don't remember who it is three or four or five years later. Crazy. So all you got to do is stay in touch with people. And you can do that with a newsletter. I mean, I'm not going to do anything more than what I just said. Newsletter, anniversary connection, birthdays, if I get those into my system, wishing people a birthday, and uh, maybe eventually having some kind of client event if for people that are here later this year. That's it. Annual market analysis. All right? So now, what's on your list? What part of all that do you need to be able to go do? I know what I have to do, and I'm working on it. And uh, I will have it done by, the, uh, by all of the stuff that I am not done with. My goal is to have completely in place by, I'm going to say it right now, by the end of January. I can do it. Dan likes systems. I'm about halfway there. I'm halfway there. So if you're systematized, you're in good shape. And you you already you have all of it. You have it all. A lot of it up here, but you I just do, and I have it on scraps of paper. It just needs to get yeah. into the system, the format that I'm going to use, and then just stick with it and follow my checklist. Boom, five star client experience. We Great talked a little, bit, a little bit in the beginning about our Real Estate Sales Builder course. It has all of this information plus a whole lot more. And we, um, uh, it, we re, it was our, our signature course is Team Builder. We had a course in place that was kind of the Sales Builder, but we revamped that whole damn uh, content this last year, put 119 videos together and uh, 12 modules over 100 or nearly 100 documents. And um, and it's really it's a really comprehensive good course. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, absolutely. And, and it's not just for new agents, it's for anybody. It's that's right. Designed because, to help a new agent do it right, but for you seasoned agents that never that are just flying by the seat of your pants, which I am doing on some levels myself, just trusting you know what you're supposed to do, but I drop the ball on things. It's for you too, because if you take the time put the systems in place, the real estate systems in place, keep it simple. Then you're in a place where you have a little bit more peace of mind and it helps you get to the place where you easily could hire an assistant once you're so busy because then they can pop in and take over your systems for you. And that's sweet. So if you are interested in that course, we're going to offer your, our podcast listeners a 25% um, off. Just use the coupon code RESB25 at checkout. R-E-S-B-25. Uh, go to WBNL podcast, excuse me, WBNL coaching.com and go to courses and use that coupon code. There you go. It already is at a super low price. So you get another 25% off. Thank you for listening. We know that some of you are out there hearing this. If you've made it this far, then you get that discount. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. There you go. All right, Jan O'Brien, next week. I'm excited about next week. I always love it when we do this. Next week, we're going to be review. doing our, our 2021 year-end review. Um, not just real estate. We're going to talk about everything <laughs> next next uh, next week. So it's going to be a fun conversation. The year that was. 2021, the year that was. <sighs> and a lot happened in this last year. Yes, indeed. So... Probably some similar themes, but let's see if we've moved, moved, uh, moved everything a little further if we're taking steps backwards or, you know, what are the trends? What are we projecting? And and what are the things that we liked for the year? And we do That's like right. to talk a little bit about, you know, I always like to talk about, you know, uh, entertainment and, and other things yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be a good uh, podcast and uh, it's, uh, it's often cathartic. Actually it's, 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 it, it is, um, uh, if you, depending upon what your mind frame is when you're talking, when you're reviewing a year, um, you could end up th being a lot happier after it's over because a lot of times you focus on the negative and not the positive. And when you're talking about it all in one lump sum, you might realize it wasn't such a bad year after all. So that's totally. Amazing. 
Absolutely. I love it. All right. Great, well, Brad. I'm glad you're going to take a little time off this weekend and go do a little family stuff. That's going to be that's fun. It. It are, you will driving, be. Are, you, are you driving or flying? Flying. Awesome. Yes, indeed. And be back and we'll, we'll, we'll do our year end review and get ourselves ready for 2022. That's right. All right. We'll be safe out there, John O'Brien. Best year lot, ever. There's a lot going on out there right now. So, all right, everyone, go over to WBNLpodcast.com, episode 194. If you want to see all of our show notes, go over to WBNLcoaching.com and go to our courses and use the coupon code, R- code RESB25 to get 25% off our um, real estate sales builder course. And other than that, we will see you next week. Be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs> <laughs>